Hello, this is Pastor Paul. Welcome to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. We're glad you're here. Each week we provide the sermon from our worship service as a way of sharing the hope we have found in Jesus Christ. To learn more about Lord of Life, please visit our website at www.lordoflife.online. And now, here's this week's message. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Generally, the theme for this message is, what are you hungry for? Or what are you hungering for? I'd like to start out with a fun exercise, because why not, right? See if you can complete these well-known slogans for fast food restaurants. No judgment if you can or can't. The first one says, I'm... Loving it from the piano from who? McDonald's. McDonald's. Very nice. Who says their food is finger licking? Yeah. yeah. I saw on the Tonight Show they're going to have a KFC themed hotel with a chicken on demand button in every room. I'm just saying. Uh, try this one. Have it your uh, Burger King, right? Um, oh, this is one of my personal favorite ones right now. It says uh, simply, we have the... <laughs> Other people like it too. Barbies, right. This one it might be a little bit trickier. Think outside the... No. Bun is correct for... It sounds like dung. Taco Bell. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. But you're close, because then we would say eat... I heard eat drink, and, eat, drink, and be merry. Eat fresh, yes, is... That's the one for Subway, right? That's not bad. It's not bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. It's funny how things stick with us, especially when there's a connection to food. Right? Food reinforces memories for us through its tastes and its flavors and its smells. Have you noticed that you can be completely unaware that you're hungry but smell something and suddenly go, ooh, I'm a little hungry, right? Or see a commercial on TV, this is the worst, especially late at night, and all of a sudden you see this food on TV and you're like, why don't I have that? I'm so hungry. Not to put too fine a point on this, but all this food talk, but there, uh, there was a scientist named Pavlov. Anybody know about this guy? Right, he trained dogs. And they had different sensory things, and when they heard a bell ring, they would start to salivate, even if there was no food there. I'm just saying, we probably aren't that far off from Pavlov and his dogs when it comes to food. But we do love to eat. I love to eat. It's pretty obvious. Sometimes we eat when we aren't even hungry. Anyone else enjoy a snack while you're watching a football game or maybe the Olympics over the last couple of weeks? Right? We eat mindlessly at times. Sometimes someone offers us a brownie and we say, oh, no, I I couldn't, even as we're licking our fork, wondering, how did that brownie ever get in front of me? 
People eat to fill an emotional need. People eat because the rest of the crowd is eating. I experienced that at the funeral luncheon the other day. People eat when it's convenient and it's easy. Whatever they have in front of them is fine, even if it's not what they're really hungry for. We've been talking about food, about bread that comes down from heaven, right? About Jesus in the Gospel of John. Today's uh, reading is, I think, kind of the climax of this section. We hear more about Jesus as the bread of life, living bread, come down from heaven, and what that means. And it's controversial, to say the least, for this first century audience of Jesus. The religious leaders are continuing their complaining about Jesus. Remember last week we talked about that a little bit, about how shocking it was that Jesus would make this claim. That isn't this, you know, Joseph and Mary's boy, but no, Jesus is saying, I've come down from heaven. And now in response to their grumblings about how anyone can offer their flesh and blood to eat and drink, Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. You see, Jesus knows what is to come. He knows what this, it's a metaphor in a way, about flesh and blood is all about. A meal that will gather people together around tables to remember Jesus and the forgiveness that he brings. Interestingly, John's Gospel does not include a Last Supper story like we get in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The religious leaders ask a reasonable question. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And the answer doesn't address the question at all, really, but instead reiterates Jesus' previous statements that he is the true bread from heaven, the source of eternal life. Jesus' invitation is extraordinary, and it invites his followers who are here to do something very ordinary. Share a meal. Get together and share a meal. Like wisdom inviting us to the feast from our Proverbs reading that Barry read just a few minutes ago, Jesus invites those who hear him, and that includes us, to share this meal, Christ's body and blood. And in so doing, Jesus teaches us about the breadth and depth of God's love and God's desire that we will abide in that love. Not empty calories, not mindless snacking, not eating when we aren't even hungry. No, this meal is something that, if we abide in the love of God for us, draws us to it, gathers us in this place, around this table with these people. Look around and see who's here with you. It's okay, go ahead. They're all, yeah, they're all there, Barry. You saw them from up here. We're all gathered together to experience something extraordinary. To taste the love of God for us in Christ Jesus. And when we hunger to dwell in the love of God, we can't help but hunger for this bread from heaven. We can't help but hunger for more things like justice and equity and care for each other, care for our community, and care for our world, right? When we hunger for this meal, we hunger for the love of our neighbor, and our thoughts turn away from ourselves, and maybe just a little more towards what's God up to in the world around me, and how can I join in? Our slogans and jingles may not be on par with the fast food industry. We could probably write a a clever jingle if we really tried, right, Jill? No empty calories in this meal, this holy communion that we will share in a few minutes. May we hunger for this bread. And like those in Jesus' hearing, that day when he was teaching. May we too plead for Jesus to give us this bread always. Amen.
thank you for listening today. We are a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America based in Asbury, Iowa. We are committed to caring for our community and for our world through creative ministry. We'd love to have you join us for worship online each Sunday at 9 a.m. Till then, may God bless you and watch over you in these days ahead.